it's uh, nine o'clock Tuesday morning my second day of work and I come by the lake here most mornings and spend a little bit of time searching the surface for different waterfowl different gulls maybe terns and things like that oh look there's a, a grebe I like seeing the grebe, you don't see them for very long. Can you see that really pointed beak? The tufts on the top of the head and the russet brown on the side. So these are great crest, crested grebe. Both disappeared now, but they'll be back up in a minute and we don't know where exactly they'll pop up. But last time I saw them, they were about 50 meters away and suddenly they popped up here, so they've gone a long way under the water. There's one, yep, she's back up. And there he is. So they're both back with us. Well, I better get on my bike again and get myself off to work. Got lots to do today, we're gonna to be filming Hi everybody, I'm just uh, making, I'm making um, a ladle and I've been working, this was a prototype, this was my original version, this was the actual very original version, this was made by one of my sons Joseph, he's been making, oh he made this about 12 years ago for him and his family and um, so I've been making a prototype. I made a prototype there and now I'm making the real one. So I've been filming this and making the video to show you how to make it. And that, that might lead me into why I'm doing what I do because I'm, I'm a furniture maker by craft as you may or may not know. Some of you will and some of you will have been following me for a number of years or a number of weeks, a number of months. But why I do what I do is to try to dismantle mechanism that might put you on a conveyor belt in your home workshop where you start setting up equipment that will do some of this work. So a few years ago, I was working in the USA and uh, every evening we used to have workshops for children and the children came in and I taught them how to make wooden spoons and cutting boards and spatulas and things like that. And they used hand tools because, why? Because they were safe. They were very, very safe. As long as, you were super, as, long as they were supervised, so I taught the parents, I taught the children, showed them how to sharpen and set spoke shaves, how to sharpen gouges like this. And once we had that down, we could start carving the scallops that made the bowl of a wooden spoon using gouges, perfectly safe as long as they're supervised and as long as you taking care of them. So that's what I wanted to just briefly talk to you because why I do what I do isn't always obvious. I'm not trying to give, give you tricks that uh, are bamboozling and, and um, full of frou-frou. I'm just giving you nuts and bolts stuff that helps you to carve a spoon or a spatula or a ladle or whatever it is. But what I'm really doing is I'm crafting you. I'm working on your personality, I'm working on your character. In just the same way, I used to do that with the children of other people that brought their children into the classes in the evening. We could have anything upwards of 30 to 40 children coming into woodworking classes on different nights in a given week. And we did that for years, I did that for years. And what I was doing, I was taking away everything that didn't look like a spoon. So I started with a blank of wood like this. It's, this is not a spoon. But then I took a section of it and I cut down different parts of it with a handsaw, cut this with a handsaw, didn't take me long. And then I started scalloping the bowl, uh, putting it in the vise, using the gouge, chop, 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 making that, that um, scallop in there. And then I took the handle, I took the spoke shave and I started cutting here. I used a, a handsaw to take off the bulk of the waste and I started shaping this just like this. And then I took a scraper and I would scrape it with a scraper. This one is a very flexible scraper so I can bend it and I would bend this to conform 
to the, to the shape of the handle. And before I knew it, I'd carved a spoon. But what I was creating was the character of a spoon. I took a square block that had no character and I ended up with a wooden, uh, wooden ladle like this. But what I was really doing was I was crafting that child. I was crafting his personality, encouraging perseverance, giving him de determination, uh, facing up to responsibilities. When it didn't quite work, I would encourage him to go back and try again. Let's do it this way, try it that way. And that was how I learned how to teach adult woodworkers. I had to go back in and become as a child, as it were, working with children, knowing how they would give up, and, but then coming through after I'd taught children from maybe seven years old all the way up to adults of 17, 18. And then I started teaching classes to the public over and above my furniture making. And boy, did that work. So we ended up with a, a mass of people being trained. And then I, I was asked if I would ever consider uh, doing videos, making videos. So I started, yeah, we started making videos. I didn't think it would work, but it's worked. And we've reached, um, you know, several millions of woodworkers around the globe over the number of years that we've been doing this. And, and what I found along the way is that, yes, I've trained people to carve wooden spoons or spatulas or ladles or cutting boards who are actually making a living from it. <laughs> so they, they're doing what I used to do. I used to sell these and make a living from, from selling wooden spoons. I've done, I've turned work. I've done all kinds of furniture work. We're losing this skill, these skills. Year on year, there are fewer and fewer hand tool woodworkers. No matter what the YouTube is doing, it, we're still losing skilled workers. And there's a generation, and I feel, like, feel often that I'm the last one in this generation uh, that's around. There's not many like me around where you've had 65, listening to this, 65 years no, 60 years, 61 years of daily woodworking, six days a week, every day of my life, earning a living and making sure I could pay every bill before I died. And so that's what I've done. That's what I still do. I love woodworking and I want other people to do this because they love it. And that's why people come to my channel. They don't come here to learn to mass manufacture wooden spoons or anything else. They come here to this channel, to my work, purely so they can learn the hand tool skills. How do you sharpen a gouge? What kind of gouge should I use? How do I sharpen a spoke shave? How do I use it? Which should I get? Should I get round bottom or flat bottom? Can I use a plane? Can I use this? Can I use that? And I just give the solid advice that they need to make whatever they want to make. I just wanted to experiment a little bit here just to see how long it takes me to carve a deep bowl like this before I shake the handle and everything. So here I'm reaching a point here where I can't go any further because the grain isn't uh, allowing me to. So I want to go a lot deeper than this yet. So what do I do when I reach this point where the grain is against me? I'm going to go across the grain like this and start taking out some depth this way. So I work from one side across to the other, work with the grain as best I can, because right in the middle of the bottom of this bowl is where I would be working against myself if I continued to work from my right to my left. So I'm going down, getting rid of some of that waste wood. This works really fine. Of course, in green wood, this would go uh, a lot easier, but I'm starting out with dry wood because it means that it's already dealt with shrinkage and I won't get any splitting 
that is normally associated with green wood after you've made a project from it and that's the great danger is you could make a beautiful spoon and if you just get the drying wrong you might end up with a cracked spoon or an egg separator I'm going to switch gouges now this is a tighter sweep and this will allow me to work differently so yeah this is going well look, look, look. can you see so it's really quite deep if I measure measure that yeah three quarters of an inch good three quarters of an inch I'm going to come down from the high rise part of the spoon now that's this end notice I've kept everything symmetrically square so that I can work from the vise like this here I'm going across the grain just to take out the bulk of that waste now I've got to be careful again because I'm going into the end grain at the moment which will only go so far it's quite challenging to carve a, a ladle this way or a spoon this way but it, it's a great way of learning about grain, about grain direction so here I'm going across the grain because it works very effectively with the right chisel, a good sharp gouge, like this. So I'm feeling now for the direction I want to go or I have to go, I don't have a choice unless I go across the grain like this. So I'm going across the grain, working it like this. I'm really doing quite well here. Once you've gone down deep enough and you feel you've accomplished what you wanted to in terms of the depth and the shape, one of the best tools for refining it is going to be a scraper. And that's what I use next. So here is my scraper. You can see the shape of it. So this is a scraper, it actually has a cutting edge which we develop on that edge. It's really a very sophisticated edge into the bottom of the bowl and it takes the shaving off, not dissimilar to a, a very fine setting on a plane or a spoke shave. And you can use it in, in any direction you want to, you can go against the grain with it or with the grain. And just keep going until you've taken out any uh, gouge marks or shave, shaving marks that you want to get rid of. And that is basically how I would carve the bowl of my ladle. Worked really well. <laughs>